The law of uh, universal gravitation states that uh, it was proposed by Newton that the force of gravity between two objects is some constant times the mass of the two objects multiplied together divided by the square of the distance between them. So if you have a, an object here of mass m1, this is the center of that object, and here's an object 2 of mass m2, that's the center of this object, and this is the distance from the center of one to the center of the other, you can write it with a capital R or a small r, then the force of gravitational attraction that m2 is pulling m1 is going to be in this direction, so m1 is going to be pulled towards m2, and m2 is going to be pulled towards m1, and the forces are going to be exactly equal and opposite. So the Earth pulls the Moon, if this is the Earth, it pulls the Moon towards it with exactly the same force with which the Moon pulls the Earth towards itself. Now, uh, the statement of the loss is that every particle in the universe, which has its own mass m1, attracts every other particle of mass m2 according to this equation. So if you have other particles, each one of them would be pulling every one of the others. Now, uh, this is a force that acts over a distance and there's nothing in between and that was something that was quite difficult for people to, uh, to accept, even for Newton, that how can a force act with nothing in between? There's no connection between these two it's just a vacuum in between but they still pull each other but we had to come to this conclusion because otherwise the moon would not go around the earth it would just go off in a straight line there has to be a force that's pulling it over towards it now uh, this law was proposed that it's a product of the masses divided by the square of the distance and then this was proposed in around um, 1867 yeah 1687 and then, after about a hundred years, in 1797, Cavendish did, did an experiment to measure the value of G. And the experiment that he did involved uh, 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 two masses, looks like this. We had a, he had a, a, a fiber under which was attached a rod and there were two masses attached to the rods and there were two heavy masses that were sort of fixed and then because of gravitation initially this rod was here it was pulled towards uh, this mass was pulled towards this one and this was pulled towards this one and so the rod twisted or, or the rod yeah moved like that and this caused this string this uh, K, uh, fiber to twist okay so this fiber uh, twisted and because of the twist it wanted to go back because uh, of elasticity and he somehow knew that if it twists by a certain angle how much force is required to twist it by that angle so that is the force provided by gravity so what he wanted to measure was this angle by which it tilted and to do that because this 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 angle is extremely small to make it uh, sort of uh, an accurate measurement he had a mirror here he had a beam of light from here that hit the mirror and went off somewhere far away so when the mirror turned by a very small angle the spot of light far away on the wall moved a bigger distance and by measuring that distance and measuring this distance he could figure out the angle that the mirror turned and from there the force so he he managed to find the value of g at 6.674 into 10 to the power minus 11 and the units would be newton meter square per kilogram square so with this constant in this equation we can calculate the force of gravity between different objects now force is a vector so we would like to write it in the form of a vector 
this is a, written as a scalar, so this is the magnitude of the force. But if you want to write the direction, then we can say this is the unit vector R12. So it's a vector that goes, uh, that points from 1 towards 2. Then the force on M1 due to M2, let's just write this as FG1, the force on M1 is going to be uh, this whole thing, G M1 M2 over R square. That is going to be the magnitude of the force. And the direction of the force is going to be R12. And similarly, the force on M2 is going to be the same magnitude, but a negative of R12. So it's going to be pointing in the negative of R12 direction. Now, uh, this is the way it's written in the book with actually a negative sign because it's the force on uh, 2 due to 1 in the negative R12 direction. And one of the common mistakes that people make in solving these is they sort of cancel this R with one of these R's. This R is the unit vector or the direction vector only. So it's not to be cancelled out with this. Now, let's do an example using this equation. So if let's consider a, a person standing here and let's say the person is a hundred kilograms, so he's a fairly heavy, heavy person. And here, let's say we have a mountain, which is, uh, well, let's just say it, the center of the mountain is here because we need to measure the distances to the centers of masses. And let's say this is a hundred thousand tons. It's the mass of this mountain. And the distance between the two is 20 meters. Okay, so it's not very far away and it's rather heavy. So what is the force of attraction between the two? Well, we'll, we'll use the equation. F is going to be G M1 M of the person, M of the mountain over the distance between them squared. The direction is going to be plus X. So it's going to be 6.674, 10 to the power minus 11 and the mass of the person is a hundred kilograms. The mass of the mountain is one, two, three, four, five, which tends to eight because it has to be in kilograms. And the distance is 20 meters squared. And this comes out to 1.67 into 10 to the power minus three newtons. Now, to get an idea of the, of the magnitude of uh, 10 to the minus three newtons, Let's suppose that you go to your physics lab and well, what you've been doing is you've been using a pulley. So we attach a pulley here. We tie a string and it goes over like this. And the question is how much weight should we hang over here so that, the that, so that this MG, which creates a tension here, which will create a tension here. And this tension is enough to prevent the person from being pulled towards the mountain because without this, uh, the person is, going, is being pulled towards the mountain and we want to apply an equal force so that he just stays there. So what will be the mass that you have to hang over here to balance this? Well, uh, we know that uh, this mg equals t and t equals this t which is equal to this value. So we can say that the tension is mg, this mg. And so the m is going to be tension over g the tension is going to be 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 3 newtons and the g is 9.8 meters per second square and this gives us an answer of 0 0.17 milligram so it's uh, like a 0 0.17 into 10 to the power minus 3 gram and just to get an idea of how much is a milligram well, if you take a grain of rice and divide it into 10 parts and take one part, one tenth of the grain of rice, that would be almost one milligram. Very crude, very roughly, because it depends on the size of the grain and other factors. But a tenth of a grain of rice is about a milligram, and this is going to be well, almost a fifth of that.
So all you need to do is attach a tiny portion of uh, the grain of rice over here, and that's going to be enough to prevent this person from moving that way. Of course, this is just hypothetical. This, the mass of the string is going to be far more than that. Okay, uh, so now, um, as, uh, 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 well, uh, another example, this was also uh, an example that we did. We would, uh, if you have uh, two or three masses, let's say four masses, so what is the force on this mass due to all of the others? So let's say this is one, two, three, and four, and the distances would be R1, uh, let's say R1, two, R1, three, and R1, four, and well, they would be the unit vectors for each of them then the force on one due to all the others is going to be force due to uh, due to two on one force due to three on one and force due to four on one they're all pulling it and so we'll just apply the same equation here as we had here uh, taking care of the vectors in each time and then add all the vectors so it has to be a vector equation so just add them all up and you'll get the net force due to all of them now we'll we now look at the relationship between uh, what we call the capital G which is the 6.674 into 10 power minus 11 Newton meter square per kilogram square which is called the uh, universal uh, gravitation co constant or constant of gravitation and we say it's universal because we think it applies all over the universe or and all sizes of bodies small and large applies to galaxies applies to atoms the other G is a little g or the lowercase g which on the surface of the earth is 9.8 meters per second square and this is the acceleration due to gravity okay and this is primarily on the surface of the earth but it could be at other places also so they are two entirely different things this must always be written with a lowercase g and this must always be written with an uppercase g now let's suppose we want to find the value of g on earth so this is our uh, surface of the earth and that's the center of the earth so this distance from the center of the earth to the surface is the radius of the earth we'll use re for that and here we have a little mass which is shown rather high up but it's supposed to be very close to the surface and then this mass is m the mass of the earth is me and this is being pulled towards the earth with fg the force of gravity which we know is going to be its weight so the force of gravity on this object is going to be g mass of this object m mass of the other object which is the earth over the distance from the center of the earth up to here now this distance is small maybe a, a meter or a few so we can just take this as r e square now this force is simply the weight and the weight is given by mg so we can equate the two and say mg equals g m m e over r earth square and this m would cancel with the m and the value of g comes out to be g m e over r e square so that's the value of g so the two g's are, are related by the radius of the planet and its mass we can rearrange this to write it as mass of the earth is g radius of the earth square over g so let's use this to find the mass of the earth so uh, the g is 9.8 meters per second square the radius of the earth is um, it's 6371 kilometers 
which would be 6.371 into 10 to the power 6 meters, okay, this equation requires that all distances to be in meters, 6.674 into 10 to the power minus 11 Newton meters square <coughs> per kilogram square, and that's meters per second square. We solve this and we get uh, 5.96 into 10 to the power 24 kilograms. That is the mass of the Earth, which is very good because the values in the book are uh, 5.97. Okay, so um, this would be uh, an easy way to get the mass of a planet. You just go to the planet and drop a stone measure the acceleration with which falls down and well you do need the radius also so once you have the two you can get the mass of the planet and well we can do it much more easily by looking at well as we'll see later this acceleration towards the earth would be the same as if it were going in orbit around the earth the two acceleration the centripetal acceleration would be the same as this one and therefore by looking at a satellite in orbit we can calculate the mass of a planet if you know the time uh, that it takes to go around the planet. Now, if you go higher up, for example, a distance that's not trivial, so you go way up, and this height is h, and the same mass is here, so now what is the value of g over here? It's, let's see what happens. So instead of re, we will place now the total height from the center of the earth so it's going to be the r and so g at a great height at uh, h above earth the value of g would become from this equation it becomes g mass of the earth over r plus h squared so you just go from the center of the earth to, the, to that point, or you can simply say g m e over r square, where r is the distance from the center, center of the earth. Now, let's uh, look at um, the distance to the center of the the, 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 the value of g example if you were to go to a height that's equal to the to the distance to the moon so here's the earth and here's the moon and this is the total distance from the earth to the moon so what is the value of g with which the moon is falling towards the earth or if you put an object here which is at the same distance just let it go it's going to start falling towards the earth so what would be the value of g with which it falls down when it's at that height. So g at r equals distance to the moon. And we can uh, just plug it in here. Uh, the distance to the moon is um, um, 385,000 kilometers from the center of the earth to the center of the moon so that's the distance that we're going to use and so g is going to be um, g m e over r square 6.674 tenths power minus 11 mass of the earth is 5.97 tenths power 24 okay that's the more proper calculation uh, for the mass of the earth and the radius is 3.85 this is 10 to the power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we make it 8 because it has to be in meters squared. And this gives us a value of 0 0.00269 meters per second squared. Now, um, if we just compare this g, let's write it as gm, uh, g on the surface of the earth at which is just g and divide that by g at m so it's 9.8 over 0 0.00269 this comes out to um, 
3643. And if we compare the ratio of the distances, for example, the, the R that we have used here to the moon divided by R Earth, this comes out to um, R is 385,000 kilometers. And the radius of the Earth is 6371 kilometers. This radius, uh, the ratio of the radii comes to 60.4. If we square this, this value, it comes to 3648. 3648 is almost exactly the same as 3643. So the ratio of the radii of the distance squared is the ratio of the square of the ratio of the distance squared is the ratio of the g's. And it is this thing that led Newton to believe that the force of gravity depends on 1 over r square because of this ratio. Well, how did he get this value? Uh, this value? This value because he didn't have that well he got it from the centripetal force the g is the same as the centripetal acceleration as v square over r and v he got from 2 pi r over t that's how the, the 2 pi r over t would be the velocity squared over another r so he got the velocity from he got the a from here and they appear to be square and that's why I got the inverse square law.